to the next episode of whatever this is. I am down in the brickyard and we were gonna do a oscilloscopes thing and we canceled it. And so instead I am gonna sit here and uh, do whatever happens. We'll see. There's a whole thing, yeah. Uh, several things are on my agenda to have happen. So um, join in, come join me on Twitch, hang out, um, tell me what to do. <laughs> Welcome. Um, I've rearranged my little webcam so that you can see my work in progress um, because I want to get some of that done. This is fixing up of, um, and it's kind of upside down, I guess. Like, that's the near side, the top of it is the near side. Let me see if I can just flip that around because it's kind of silly. <laughs> Bear with me one second. Oops, wrong one. Not that one. Let's hide that for a moment, and uh, what do I do with that? I guess I go like rotate, uh, rotate 180 degrees, and flip it back up again, and now it's more sensible. The the near end is at the bottom, so you can see my workbench, and you can see the teletype that is totally working. Uh, we are online. It is connected to the internet. And uh, let's zoom in a little and see if we can't. Um, uh, go see what's going on out in the internet. Um, the main first thing, obviously. Um, Obviously, the first thing to do is clear the screen. <laughs> Doesn't really clear it very far. Not far enough. Anyway, far enough to matter. Um, and we picked up last week with printing lots of moon pictures. So that seems like a good place to start today. Um, thank you. Um, Sure, for buying my moon picture, I was so delighted that I had a customer on Etsy and a, a well-deserving one, <laughs> somebody who's like totally into ASCII art. Um, so let's see what the moon looks like tonight. Yeah. And for those of you who aren't keeping up with this at home, um, this goes to the uh, US Naval Observatory and fetches the current uh, kind of simulated picture of the moon disk um, and turns it into ASCII art of a sort. Turns it into ASCII. Whether you could call it art or not, that's a moot point. And um, prints it using the overstrike technique. So there's the first line, and let's print right on top with the second so that we can get nice detail shading. You know, subtlety. Although subtlety and 
structured data interchange seem to be completely incompatible, but let's do with that some other time. Let's look at the moon. All right. Uh, yeah, meanwhile, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a moon. Yeah, it really looks like a moon. All right. Looks like a waxing crescent. Okay. Can you see that clearly? It is, it's a waxing crescent tonight at 23.13, which is like UTC. Uh, so this is obviously not like Eastern time. It is a good shaped crescent moon, I think. Yeah. So I'm very pleased with the way that the um, the askiness of this does overlay. I mean, that's really my the the thing that pleases me the most amongst everything of how these moon pictures turn out is is that it does this like overlay and picks the directionality, like the the little slashes, the forward and back slashes line up with the way that the shadows move, so that pleases me. Uh, so I didn't really intend to do a lot of moon stuff tonight, but um, I've got to do some. Um, <laughs> so, let's see, why do I not have power on my MacBook? I don't know, but let's try to fix that. Okay, we got power. That should help things run. Um, yeah, the other thing that I wanted to do was pick up with Miss Piggy. So we'll do that. Miss Piggy is the PDP-1170 at the original one, like it's not a simulation, it's a real machine that runs at the Living Computers Museum in Seattle. And I want to pick up where we left off with Miss Piggy. But 
Meanwhile, let me show you a little bit more of this thing so that you can see what I'm doing here on the uh, on the workbench. I wonder actually, can I just like stretch this thing? I'm gonna try it. Let's see if it works. It may be super grungy, like uh, not very detailed, but uh, <coughs> it gives you a better idea of what's actually happening here. Um, these are the innards of the core control unit, um, which is basically the power supply and the, the, the circuitry logic for the teletype, from my teletype that's under reconstruction. And it was eaten by a mouse, and it was generally messed up by having a mouse live in there. Um, so because that's a little blurry, I'm going to put it back where it was. Um, and I'll show you what I'm doing to it in a little more detail and then um, you can follow along. Um, if you're looking for other teletype restoration detail then there's also this. Curious Mark has just published part two of his um, his team's teletype 33 reconstruction and I haven't watched it yet. Part one was wonderful. Part two is probably even more wonderful as they try to actually debug it. They're making greater progress than I am because it's like edited. <laughs> it's a professional uh, program. <laughs> so I just like come in here and tinker and they actually spend hours like, doing things and then record it and then stitch it back together again afterwards, which is... Um, a very good thing to do. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to watch that later. That's my uh, this evening or tomorrow kind of watching. But um, let me show you the one that I have so that you can compare. And I'm going to do this with a little bit of jumping around here. So that's the state of my life. It has. Uh, it's okay. It has a tape reader that is in decent condition. It has a tape punch, which is mechanically attached to the printer. The print unit is okay. It's a little grungy. It's, it's really pretty grungy. I have not grown all the things that we need to know here we're going to get to. But I'm going to start with the electronics. Now, if you zoom in on the electronics, um, this thing here, you can, you can just about see it. Um, all of these wires were chewed by this. And this, this was badly chewed. And these were all, like, covered in horrible blood. So that is my job. It's very simple. I'm going to remove the grunge. And along with removing the grunge, um, I'm not going to fix, like, I'm not going to replace a whole ton of wiring because it seems like too much work. Um, instead, I'm going to replace it where it really needs it. And for the rest, where the insulation is chewed, but the wire is okay, I'm just going to put heat shrink. And um, I have a small supply of heat shrink tubing. And so that's my intention. Although it may be frustrating, actually. I might find exactly... Oh, no. Let's see. My intention is to do heat shrink. And then I'll take a few uh, photographs of this um, as it goes along. And mostly I'm just taking photographs so that um, so that I don't like forget where things are. <laughs> document it. it it's, yeah, I'm not documenting it because I want to document it. I'm documenting it so that I, so that I put it back the same way it came. All right. Now. Let's talk about Miss Piggy. Uh, 
I can SSH to uh, the Living Computer Museum and Um, if I could spell living computers, I think I got my thing wrong. It's not tty at livingcomputers.org. It's Miss Piggy at tty dot. I, I don't know. Miss Piggy at livingcomputers.org. And I'll put that into my Google and must include Miss Piggy and it doesn't really help <laughs> yeah let me try some I'll just try stuff and see if it works on it um. Okay, close enough. So F U S S H to Miss Piggy at T T Y dot Living Computers dot org. Um, so we did this a little a uh, little while ago, and I have this um, Mandelbrot set fractal written in C that I tried to upload, and it totally didn't work. And so let's log in as LCN. Okay, so last time we were here, I created a directory and I, I, I loaded a paper tape of my fractal program onto it. So let's see if it's still there. I know they like clear out this guest account every so often. Um, so I'll do a long listing. It'll take a few minutes. I'm not in a rush. Meanwhile, I'm going to find some heat shrink tubing. short listing. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, so they clear out the guest account. I wonder what the DB stuff is. Should we have a look? Location. 
No, it's all, it's all, uh, it's all uppercase. I can't even CD into that directory. Okay. Okay. So, I uploaded this program with paper tape. Because I punched the fractal program onto tape and then loaded it up in here and it didn't compile and I now know because I went and looked at it I know why it didn't compile so this is actually the tape uh, this is the tape that we punched and then I uh, loaded and it says mandelbro.c and this is it now okay I love paper tape by the way I love paper tape. Uh, let's have a look at this in a little detail um, and I want like a paper tape desk <laughs> with a black background to show it like super closely I wonder a little rearrangement might make that possible Too much tape there, didn't it? Nice stuff. How about this? Alright. Let's put this down here and just use it to read tape. Alright, so at the bottom is the beginning of the tape. And this is a C program. And the first couple lines are um, comments. I suppose we should like print out the the, the C program. Um, please tell me you edited the program, hey Ross, by modifying the tape. No, <laughs> I just punched the tape, right? I mean, I didn't. I didn't even do anything special. I I literally said, uh, here's. Well, let's let's show what I did on it. Right? So, and hey, palette hands, very welcome. Lovely to see you. Um, let's log out of here. Um, I should probably control and square bracket. Yes, and then quick. We'll go back in there in a minute. Um, but here... Yeah, so the first, like... The first thing is a is a slash and an asterisk. There's an icon coming, right? And then there's a bunch of like text. I think there is a TTY version of Wikipedia. Like literally, like a line mode, like no, uh, like a something you can tell net to. That would be interesting. Uh, whoa. And that's actually totally imaginable. Wow. If you find it, put the URL in, we'll go visit. Um, yeah, let me go back to this thing then, right, with the tape. So, here at the beginning of the tape, we have slash, uh, uh, asterisk, and then I guess, carriage return and a null and a null and a line feed and a null and then we have a bunch of ASCII that's like my comment and then we have a carriage return and a null and a null and a line feed and a null so uh, slash is hex 4 7 so yeah you read the 4 uh, no <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember which way up this is. Like, uh, is that? This is the, the, the top end here is obviously the high bit, right? So, this is, uh, this is a F A. Oh, two F. Okay. Yep. Two F. And then a uh, two A is going to be the asterisk, and then uh, and then all the rest. Okay. So that's all fine, right? Paper tape is a wonderful medium for sending data around because it lasts forever, especially if you punch Mylar um, instead of paper. Um, it's uh, super high density because you can transmit the whole or you can store like um, 10 bytes per inch. That's like a kilobyte per foot or a megabyte per thousand feet or something like that. So you could store a whole MP3 on like a whole spool of tape. Anyway, <laughs> it's high density. But this carriage return line feed business is showing some artifacts, right? What I've got is a carriage return and then two nulls. And if I hold that like closer, you'll, you'll see it even like more accurately. And hold it up there so you can actually count the nulls. There's a carriage return and null and a null, and then a line feed and a null, and then a, again you can see a carriage return and a null and a null. So if you look at this one, carriage, carriage return, null null, line feed null, carriage return, null null, line feed null. So that is the way to cat it onto the printer because the nulls give the carriage time to return right you have to wait until the carriage is returned and the same with the line feed you have to wait before printing because otherwise it'll try to print the next character while it's still like feeding the line so those nulls are actually inserted by firmware that's running in the driver um, any time it prints a carriage return, it's going to put two nulls after it. And then it's going to put a line feed as well. But Unix files are just like line feed. You want to say slash asterisk line feed. And then the line of comment. And then mantle.c line feed. Then ASCII print of mantle fractals line feed. Right? So the, the start of that file should be just line feeds I'm going to say uh, dump, I want to dump like the hex digits of this thing. I can't remember my syntax, but OD. Yeah, that works exactly. So let's look at the bytes of this thing in the raw. And it starts 2F2A, right? So 2F2A is slash asterisk. And then it has OA, that's line feed. Then it has 2020, 20, those are spaces. And then a bunch of text. And then OA, that's line feed. So hey, if you haven't watched the OA, then you should watch it. It's a really good program. <laughs> I, I think they've cancelled it, or like they've canned the series. But I really enjoyed the OA, and I guess the OA is like the mystical line feed dance or something. So anyway, um, digress. So 
so anyway, I want to load this program onto punch tape and then I want to load it into Miss Piggy. But I don't want to insert these extra things because one of the things that went wrong with putting this into Miss Piggy was that there was two line breaks between every line. There was carriage return and line feed and they were both interpreted as a new line by Miss Piggy when I put them into the editor. And so I had all these spaces. So I want to just dump the raw thing onto uh, onto tape. Now the other thing I want to do is actually I do want to insert some nulls after a line feed so that Miss Piggy has time to catch up. So when I'm loading this tape in, I want to say slash asterisk line feed null 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 null, null like put like ten nulls in there and then go straight to the next line. So I guess the best way to do this is like with a little sed or something. I think I want to like take mandelbro.c and use sed to replace new lines with well sed's kind of a line oriented thing so if I replace like the start of line with nulls that'll insert nulls at the beginning of each line I guess let's try it um, TR, I want to use said. Um, replace the start of mine with. Can I do no? Like. Is that going to work? I don't know. If I if I replace the the start of line with like three nulls and pipe it in from test one and pipe it out to test two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it didn't really work. <laughs> it put three nulls at the beginning of each line. <laughs> three zeros. Okay. But it's close. How about slash x zero? Because I'm in the shell, and the shell is converting that slash zero into a I think I've got a slash x zero let's try it. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> the thing about the teletype is like the cost of failure is so high. Right? <laughs> like you, you type something wrong and you end up with a huge like printout, then it's going to take forever. Um, maybe slash zero zero zero. I don't know. Ha <laughs> ha.
<laughs> how do I get how do I get things Oh Micah seventy seven if you can't dev zero How big is Dev Zero? Is it like continuous zeros? Because if it is, it's gonna really mess up my terminal. <laughs> Can I post a link? Palette hands. Uh, please post a link in the chat and we'll go look at it. Telnet access to Wikipedia. Oh my goodness. Telnet.wmflabs.org. Seriously? We'll do that. So, bookmark that. Remind me, we'll come back to it. If I can't tev head uh, the dev zero, I don't want to count the whole of, ted of dev zero. I want to. <laughs> TD <laughs> from Sev Zero. That'll do it. Yes. Now, how do I turn that into something that I can use in a said expression? <laughs> uh, or do I have to like do this in Python? <laughs> uh, so right, you can get nulls. I bet that's going to work. Let's do it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go and, uh, like, fix this. <laughs> uh. No. Um, it's uh, it's I killed it already with Control C, so it's just like unbuffering. It's got a huge buffer. We just have to wait. <laughs> There's nothing to kill. I mean, I could log out that other terminal. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh no. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I could literally kill that process. Um, one, five, seven, three, three. No, DD stopped. Oh, that was me. Oh, I killed myself. Oh, well. <laughs> the spools do auto-reverse. Absolutely. Um, it's not making any impression, so the ribbon's going to be fine. Um, and there is um, these things here. There's a little... Um, there's a little thing that the ribbon pulls along. Uh, there should be reversing ribbit, rivets inside of the ribbon. And there's none in this, I don't think, so I tied a knot in it. And I just literally, I tied a knot in the ribbon and then I'll hit that and reverse it. Um. <laughs> no. <laughs> so who's running bash? Um. Oh yeah, I'm I'm running 504. I guess is my my other user. So there we are. It's talking to me. <laughs> Let's wait until the buffers go clear themselves um, and enjoy the silence. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, maybe while I'm still here, I can say echo slash. So this didn't work. I mean, literally this. Uh, and that didn't either. And I don't know. Um, we need some like bashness. <laughs> Um, if I say echo 
Oh, I could use printf. Oh, echo dash e says the uh, uh, says the 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 Google the Stack Overflow, whatever. So this should, like, 007 should print a bell. Yeah, okay, so that's doing the right thing. But, um, that doesn't help with said. So, <coughs> here we are, we're back in. And it's got auto login, so, um, uh, it just logged itself back in and if I look at like who is back on here then it's logged in from TTYACM0 so we missed the login text um, just because so this is actually really stupid I mean the closest thing that I'm getting here is something that literally recommends me use said with an echo command in the middle of it and that's horrible that's really ugly all I want to do is insert some blanks after some some nulls after each new line I wonder if orc I wonder if Hawk does that. Uh, does that does that look like Hawk Hawkless? No. Nope, that did something very weird indeed. Okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, there. Orc has this kind of replace characters. Oh. Okay, back to the browser. This one here says said control M. Yeah, but I had like new line, so that's okay. Or orc has a G sub. But this is like <coughs> this is doing replacement E. It's doing replacement on the input, not on the output. Yeah. I could use Python. That's the thing I'm most familiar with, so <laughs> maybe Python's the way to go. All right. <sighs> think about this. <laughs> While I think about this, let's go browsing Wikipedia on an old teletype. Thank you, Palette Hands, for the like suggestion here. I'm just going to try this and see what happens. We want to telnet to telnet.wmflabs.org. Now, using telnet without trying it first. Oh, look at that, Russ. Orc, printf, percent %c, percent %s. Orc. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, palette hands, absolutely. This is the risk of Telnet. It's like, um, I, I've, I've Telneted all sorts of places and they fill the screen with stuff. Um, so I'm tempted to still come back to that <laughs> later. Now this is the, the thing that Russ just suggested here in the, uh, uh, in the window. Um, Hawk, printf, 
da 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 and hex down da da and head. So orc that from whatever file. So let's go back on here. Nope, let's go back on here. Uh, in the fractals directory <coughs> and this directory is all up on the github if you ever want to look at it um, um, <coughs> it's at github.com slash qpile slash osr33 so, um, <coughs> the arguments are zero and dollar zero so orc uh, from test one okay to test two okay and this has now new line uh, slash asterisk and a null thank you Russ I think you've done it all right palette hands what is the interface between the computer and the teletype yeah it is a <laughs> it's, yes it's serial <laughs> uh, let me show you the serialness of it I'm gonna show you uh, <coughs> no new line Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, new lines would be useful there. Um, and also, I want like five nulls instead of just one. Um. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll show you the serial thing. Right, so. Um. Uh, let's see. This is the, uh, this is the output of the key. And when you press the key, and so this is this is the keyboard on my spare for the on the, on the stuff. It goes into eight bits, and there's eight bits actually coming out of the keyboard. The eighth is usually the parity bit. Then it goes into this control unit here, plugged in one of these. And there's a mechanical thing somewhere. Uh, like one of these, uh, that then trips a clutch, and the clutch untrips this distributor that spins around, and the distributor has the eight bits along the end of it, and they're mapped to these bits here. And so the distributor spins around for one cycle, and that sends the bits in a serial connection down the wire. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's how the serial thing works. And then there's, then there's a 20 milliamp current that goes through it. So it ends up with um, this bit here uh, is the, the business end of that. And I have this little custom thing that is a current loop to serial uh, adapter, and it's built with a Teensy microprocessor. Um, and then, yeah, it goes to USB. So it, it, it uses the Teensy to go to USB. Uh, it's not necessarily the best way to do it, actually. I mean, um, a more flexible way to do it is to go to RS-232 first and then use RS-232 to USB um, because then you can plug it straight into like vintage hardware like if I had a vintage PC or a, a mini uh, of some sort and the most convenient way to do that is actually um, I, I don't know where my adapter is there, there is an adapter that's produced by some guy at DRAM dot something DE D E R A M P dot com and um, so DRAM produces a teletype 
adapter um, and it's somewhere on their website under for sale here we are and this is a really nice little unit because it plugs directly onto uh, the teletype kind of molex and it then gives you a RJ11 uh, telephone style four wire plug that's RS232 and then you can plug the other end of that straight into a PC. So that's that's the right way to do it and I, I think I'm going to do that on the new one once it works. Um, so let's go back to this and instead of going here I'm just going to say pipe through OD uh, and pipe. pipe the first lines through head so let's see print does that do anything? no that doesn't do oh dollar zero is the first string and then so if I do percent C five times I get a bunch of those. And then if I also do that, I guess. Yeah. So I have nulls. I have 2F, 2A. Carriage return, null, 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 null. And then the rest of it begins. OK. Let's see if I can reproduce that. Oh, you think I want the null at the end? Oh, the carriage return at the end. I think I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that'll print the whole line. So this is using awk to print five nulls and then the string and then a new line. Perfect. <clears throat> and it puts some nulls in front and that's fine. <coughs> now, how does orc work with no curly bracket? Orc needs curly brackets, doesn't it? I mean, on the teletype there is no curly bracket, so I'm a little stymied in terms of... Uh, I, I can do square brackets, and I don't think orc is going to like square brackets, but let's test it. Um, so, so orc and the teletype. I mean, back in the the distant past, there were conventions for writing curly braces using a teletype, and they've all gone out the window. Um, so I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do the translation right here because <laughs> we're here, <laughs> right? I mean, this this Mandelbrot.c is right in this directory, so I can just do it. <laughs> I'm not going to run this from the teletype. Instead, I'm going to do mandelbro.c and uh, what shall I call it? mandn.c. Okay. And we, sure enough, we have OAs and then a bunch of nulls. So. Okay, that is good enough. And if you cat it, then it just looks normal. And that's fine too. So, here's this ASCII with a bunch of nulls. I want to punch it on tape so that I can put it up to Miss Piggy. And to do that, I have to disable the uh, that firmware on the serial interface so the the serial interface is it uses a, uh, a teensy microprocessor uh, and I'll show you it. actually I'll show you the the piece of code that does this up in this github here there is a firmware thing and this uh, very, very hacky 
piece of uh, Arduino code for the Teensy. Um, does all of this stuff, but it does all of this um, translation. Um, so it, it even has ANSI escape sequence support. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it does ANSI escape sequences on the teletype because I thought that would be a fun thing when I was young and ignorant <laughs> or something. <laughs> so anyway, I, I have to send it a special ANSI escape code to say, turn off all of your silly processing. Um, yeah, so let's do that. And the continuous paper, by the way, um, is lovely. Um, even if it gets like slightly moth-eaten at the end, I mean, it's it's really nice to have yellowy sat in somebody's garage for years. Well, and then if I'm feeling a little more disposable, then you can get new stuff from Staples, and it fades. Like this is already going going brown um, so yeah you can buy it new online at Staples and maybe it'll fade by itself I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway um, so here, um, What did I do? I, I had something that was like it, it, in my bin directory, or maybe it was an alias. Maybe it's an alias. I've got some aliases in here for some stuff. And uh, T binary, there it is. In my profile, I'm aliasing T binary is this thing that says turn the TTY to raw and then print an escape sequence that should turn off all the special processing that's in the um, uh, in the team C so now if I do like LS then like new lines take no effect uh, or rather they don't jump they do a new line, but they don't do a character turn. And there's no word wrap, and there's no extra kind of processing. So I am now in a good position. Um, to turn on the tape and cat that mandn.c and then some more nulls. Poor paper <coughs> is not going to be very happy. But now look at this. We've got a very clean new line and a bunch of nulls. So that's lovely. We've got new lines with nulls coming out with the paper tape just the way I want them. Okay, let's uh, look at paper tape as it prints. There it is. It's coming out with nulls out. So this is my master tape for the Mandelbrot set. 
And I think this means that I can load this thing straight up into uh, Miss Piggy. Um, just by using cat. I mean, previously, I, last time I used ed, or ed, I went into the editor and, and then, like, read the tape in. I think I can just use cat. And, um, and hit the tape ring. So there we go. Let's let it punch. I have a lot of things. And I'm cleaning with, um, yeah, we're punching, absolutely, yeah. That's the reader underneath. Uh, and this, is the, this is the punch. And you can even see the chad coming out. And then the chad bunches down a tube and goes into a little box underneath. This is my tape, my cleaner. So that's interesting on this cleansing project. Uh, it's more gross than I expected. All right, put that down. Uh, that looks beautiful. It's clean and it's huge. It's going to take me weeks to roll it back up. I like the idea of that tape feeding into a shredder to make volatile tape memory. Oh my goodness. Uh, I saw a thing on one of the mailing lists. <laughs> so that <laughs> yeah. I, I saw a thing on one of the mailing lists I wasn't sure whether to believe it somebody had, had written like a PDP-8 routine to use because the amount of memory available was so low they, they wrote a routine to use um, tape as swap <laughs> so <laughs> if you're running a PDP-8 with like 2k of core or something and, and you need to swap out some, some data to load something else then, then they wrote a routine so that the OS would swap to tape to punch tape <laughs> and you'd like print out whatever it is that's in memory that you want to get rid of and then go like load whatever next and then just feed, it, feed the punch tape back in to, to restore your swap your, your memory. It's insane. You could actually do that. Um, and it appears somebody did out of necessity back in the day. 
anyway. So I'm just like rolling up this tape. It's a lovely job. I, I hope there's machines to do this, but I don't know. Um, the, uh, the deck minis have this folded tape thing where the tape doesn't come out continuously on a roll. It comes out continuously on a, on a, like a, a folded, uh, zigzaggy kind of a fold. And that, I guess, means you don't have to deal with this tedious, like, winding tape back up. But I want to wind this back up and get my terminal back to normal because it's all got binary settings. So we're back at normal, normal settings. Maybe use tabs instead of spaces to cons. No, heresy, <laughs> heresy. Tabs are useless things that are uh, a legacy of the typewriter. <laughs> Should be shot. <laughs> no, I mean tabs have no semantics. What do you? What do you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me on tab semantics. Goodness. <laughs> oh. um, yeah. Which reminds me of this, like, uh, thing I was <coughs> going to rant about to whoever would listen, and, and you guys are listening. <laughs> Which is, um, I've spent basically my whole career in software doing structured data right so structured data of one sort or another whether it's like data processing or it's just data interchange I mean structured stuff always struck me as like the most important thing and unstructured like blobs well there's no no business having blobs um, so, um, Master with nulls, so nicely labeled. Um, and <coughs> and I had this existential crisis on the way home because it struck me sitting on the train that structured data interchange has completely failed our whole society. <laughs> like the whole rise of like AI is because structured interchange doesn't work. And that's an indictment of like the whole business of computing. <laughs> Structured data ought to, ought to be for interchange, right? You ought to be able to take a piece of structured information, encode it like this in a simple 8-bit character set, ASCII, UTF-8, whatever, right? And transmit it, retaining semantics to some other system and use it for interchange and and that's like the world we should live in and um, that whole thing I think the the counter example of like why doesn't that work is just try to take a piece of thing that you want to communicate and <coughs> send it to the world using social media and have them be able to act on it Let's take the simplest thing you want to communicate. Let's take a meet me at seven o'clock at the brickyard on October the third, and maybe a picture of why. Right. So if you try to do that, communicate that meet me October the third at seven p.m. at the brickyard on social media in a structured data, machine readable, actionable format so that the, so the person who reads that message can click on it and have it appear in their calendar, right? Or show up on their phone in a, in a, in a, in a way that's actionable, right? <laughs> and you can't do it. It's a complete indictment of the whole business of structured data interchange for the last 50 years that we can't do the simplest things with it. And instead, people take photographs of 
a paper thing or a script. It's like anything but structured data interchange because the negotiation of structured data interchange has completely failed our business. It doesn't work. Nobody does it right. It's impossible. Agreeing on semantics doesn't work. Like negotiating semantics is incapable of communicating subtlety and subtlety is the whole thing and like <laughs> so you can imagine my um, angst sitting on the train and having this realization that my whole career in structured data has been a wash um, Let's go back through history. I'm just printing like control P so that I rewind history. Um, did I see GNU poke? I did not see GNU poke. Uh, I did not want to do whatever I just did. That was a really bad thing. What I want to do is go back to Miss Piggy and just cat and go into um, uh, to load this thing up. Uh, so. Let's do that. And then meanwhile, I'll maybe explore GNU poke. Um, so Miss Piggy is a real PDP 1170, and it's maintained by experts. And so the, the whole idea of connecting to a real PDP 11 with this 1970-ish machinery is delighting to me. So. This big yeah. Yay. Oh yeah. A true thermal. And that reminds me while I was like cleaning up some of this some of this stuff here, I discovered yet another wire that has been chewed completely off by the by the mouse. Not only is it covered in crust that's like raw treacle, but worse than that, there's whole wires missing that I didn't even notice. So okay. Right, where do we go? So this is an original PDP 1170, and it's rubbing 70 to the It's like super, super original. Uh, we are trying to divide your time evenly to keep others happy. Nice. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I I created this subdirectory. And I should be able to say cat to Yeah, I can do this. Let's just cat to mandelbrot.c and here's my tape. It's waiting for input. So let's go put the tape in the input.
well, it seems to be doing the right thing. It's reading it in, and it's approximately writing it back out the way it should be. It's a little jittery, but uh, yeah, that'll do. Did I see GNU poke? I did not see GNU poke. GNU poke is an interactive, extensible editor for binary data. Interesting. Okay, something to investigate. All right. I don't want this to tangle. So actually, I shouldn't have. Um, I shouldn't have rolled it up because <laughs> it's now all. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Is it doing the right thing? I believe it's doing almost the right thing. And I spotted one error, but I will go back to that when we get there. Well, there it is. It loaded. And I think it probably loaded okay. The curly brackets don't print. Uh, a true terminal. There was a Turk at kernel recipes in Paris. What are we printing? Oh, the torque. Thank you. Let me open that in a new window so that I bookmark it. Uh, about GNU poke, yeah. The curly brackets don't print. Yes, there is a Mandelbrot fractal C program, and we've just loaded this in to Miss Piggy, which is a real PDP 1170 at the Living Computers Museum and whatever they're called. Living Computers Museum and. something <laughs> in Seattle. Um, so it loaded the first stuff just great. Now, there was a little bit just after this that, that I, I think went wrong. 
So let's print the next 10 lines and we'll see. Oh yeah, okay, so actually on line 11. Um, so this is all fine. I think all of this is great. Um, when we ran it before, there is no stdlib.h on the uh, Unix v7 C. This is line. <coughs> okay. Oh, interesting. So I lost a whole line. That means I probably lost a whole lot more than just one line which is a little concerning. Because if I look back at the printout, um, you see the line that says, um, this one here, chars equals da 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 da. This is the list of all of the printable characters in uh, print density order. So it goes dot dash equals plus less than, greater than, exclamation, etc. All the way up to the, uh, the at sign at the end, and then it shouldn't have hit a new line, and then it goes KRNN. So, um, let's see if I can find that on the tape. Because it seems to have missed that line altogether. Can we recognize that? Yeah. Oh. No, that's a weird one, but I don't think it's the. I don't think it's this. What is that? I'm looking at like line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So line ten of this is line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I expected it to look more kind of binary. Huh. I mean, I could just like patch it in. Um. Totally didn't, it totally didn't accept that line. I think because there's an at. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's better than ED. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just like resisting that I might actually have to type those characters in by hand. <laughs> Uh, 
backwards arrow plus less than exclamation equals colon asterisk refund. So yeah. C All right, let's uh, see. That actually got accepted. There's something weird about the at symbol that made it mess up. So, okay, eight, And I think this is it. Hopefully this might even compile. Okay. doesn't work. Why does it not work? Line 16, external definition syntax. Line 19, external definition syntax. Line 30, arc C undefined. Oh, yeah, thank you. I need a semicolon at the end of the line, too. That would explain these error messages. Yeah. So what line was that? That was line 10. Does it build? My goodness. Build times on this... on this PDP-11. It took whole seconds to build. So, okay, well... Wow! It built! I did cc man.c and it created a.out. So I think I've succeeded. I've taken my C Mandelbro set code on punch tape and loaded it into a real PDP 1170 called Miss Piggy. What do you think? Should we run it? <laughs> yeah, I'm slowly working up to that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, no.
I just want to make sure we're not going to interrupt anybody's awesome business first. One of these is me. I mean, it's, it's 5.40 in Seattle. Okay, this is not heavily used. Um, yeah, let's run it. I mean, it's going to use some CPU, but it's going to print the metal processor. It could use some delay at the line feed, at the carriage return. And actually, I think that that's my teletype misalignment. Yeah. Now, traditionally, the thing to wrap these in is just a rubber band. Um, but I don't have any, so I'm going to use uh, a spare bit of tape and some masking tape. And there's my Mandelbrot set. I think that's pretty wonderful. I think that's really pretty wonderful. So meanwhile, I'm assembling a little box to put the tape in. It's the fractal. It is the Mandelbrot set fractal. Now, even better than like just being a Mandelbrot set fractal, um, You can you can put parameters into it. You can you can enter command line parameters to set the coordinates that you want to 
that you want to start at and the dimension. So this defaults itself to like the, the root of the fractal. <coughs> I think we've got to do some more nulls here. There's a um, maybe a misalignment in the teletype that at the end of a super long line, it doesn't really give it long enough to to wind back. Um, so I think I might actually edit the rather than adjusting the teletype, which I should do. Like I can ad adjust the dash part, but it's a little hard to read. With the lid on. There's a there's a little adjustment in here that you can adjust how f how hard the the damping on the um, on the carriage would turn. Uh, but maybe I should add some nulls when it prints new lines. So in this program here, basically it says at the end print F and then a new line. So that's a, that's an easy fix. I can print some some nulls. After my new line, I can do print f new line percent c percent c etc. And some zeros. Um, yeah, and then going back to here, these bits say if there is a uh, command line parameters then it's the real coordinate the X and the imaginary the the Y and then the D is the dimensions of the whole plot on the complex plane so we can put some nice numbers in there and get different slices of of the fractal um, and actually I have some of these already um, already set up in some of my other fractal programs. Um, let's have a look at them. Um, on here, um, there's Mandelbrot.c. This is the one that we've been working with. There's there's this the original Mandelbrot basic one that I started that doesn't have like inputable dimensions. Um, oh, maybe it does. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it doesn't let you change them to anything nice there. Um, but maybe some of these do. Yeah, this one has some nice coordinates. Let's try these coordinates. 0 0.507, 0 0.618, and 0 0.20. Let's try those as input coordinates. Um, okay.
Oh, no. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Let's do this. The boring way. The reliable way. That's the way. Eventually I'll get used to this editor. I mean, it might take years, but... <laughs> There's got to be an online manual somewhere. Now this looks okay. The one on the end doesn't need nulls. The one on the end does not need nulls. That's right. But did I, like, lose... like a curly brace or something? I just can't see the curly braces. Maybe that's what it is. I hope I didn't delete curly braces because that would really <laughs> mess me up. <laughs> I'm just going to compile it. I mean. <laughs> It'll either work or it won't. And it worked. Yay. So we can run it again, and it should print like nicer. Um, and I, this time I'm going to add these uh, numeric command line parameters um, to, to center the plot somewhere else. So negative 0.507. Negative 0.618. And then 0 0.2. And I don't think those nulls made any difference at all. They didn't. They didn't make any difference at all. I don't think these command line parameters made any difference at all. <laughs> None of that worked. <laughs> I bet when I compiled it the second time. No, my command line parameters just didn't didn't take. Arg C, Arg V, I mean all of that stuff is ancient C, right? It's been there forever since the lizard brain of V7 C compiler. How did they manage to write a whole operating system with this user interface? <laughs> and how did? <laughs> but you know how how Unix got so good is like you can't write it fast, so you've got to think about every single little thing, and so you're going to make the most elegant thing you can possibly do.
I'm not really making a lot of progress on this cleanup, <laughs> on this cleanup business. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Do trigraphs work? Yes, trigraphs work. I don't remember them, but um, <coughs> absolutely. Digraphs and trigraphs in the uh, uh, in the C language, they work just fine. Um, yeah. So why did this not like do anything different? <laughs> Who knows? Does um, does this version of C. Does this support V7? Does V7 support pipes? I'm not sure that it does. I don't remember when pipes came in. Um, okay, let's... I just built it. Nothing else is different. It is pretty. It is a very... Oh! Oh, it's different. Pay attention. It is different. This is, this is how it was. And this is how it is now. It's backwards. So, the difference is, I think, just this A to I thing. The arguments are going in just fine. But A to F, A to F is probably just different. Because look at the thing that says D equals da da da. D, if D was 0, 0.0, then it messed up and it resets it to 2, 0. So I, I think... Argv, yeah, you're right. I mean, writing a test program that prints argv1, argv2, argv3 is probably the best thing to do here. Um, well, I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sitting there looking at this. It's like I've got 10 feet of printout. and a bunch of paper tape and 
it's nine o'clock at night here in the computer lab and on the other table there is this teletype power supply that is covered in mouse goo so when you look at when you watch like curious mark in his teletype restoration he skips conveniently <coughs> over the uh, this is covered in mouse goo <laughs> goop uh, and I want to make progress with it but I can't do anything that requires thought <laughs> thinking is not on the agenda for the rest of the night This thing is looking lovely, <coughs> but I think actually my cleaning, um, my cleaning fix is get a toothbrush. I've got these uh, like pipe cleaner things, and they're great for for oily stuff. They'll work good when I come to cleaning up the, the pipe. Um, but for the electronics, I need a toothbrush and some solvent. <clears throat> but that is pretty. So I'm going to ignore my V7 inability to have my program behave the way I expected it to. And instead I'm just going to declare victory. <laughs> I'm going to declare victory. Um, so... I got that URL right. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave like a readme on the host. They'll clean it up at the end of the, the week or whatever. They'll delete all the junk off the server. But I'm happy with this. Um, so. probably the only interactive user in this. Um, the console. And there's somebody else on a terminal. Now this is a really old, a really old Unix. Should I do the guest book? It may be kind of verbose. Let's try it.
<laughs> there we are. All right, that's my session at the Living Computers Museum and Labs uh, on Miss Piggy. Um, I don't think host name actually works. Are not are not there. Like, LS doesn't even hide the dot with dot profile. And I bet there's only like a dozen devices. And LS doesn't do things in tabs. Russ, it has totally been fun. Um, battery level low, exchange battery, says the, the camera. Uh, can I do that? Excuse me. <coughs> Battery level is high again. Um, yeah, there's. It, it's a very small Unix environment. It's small enough that you could explore it on paper. <laughs> so anyway, I'm done. I'm gonna do uh, control. Get out of here. And now I'm back on a modern Unix that's uh, Debian. Um. And you can see my carriage return is actually a physical problem with my teletype or something. Maybe I didn't set the firmware back to put enough nulls in. Anyway, there are text-only web browsers. Now, <clears throat> that reminds me the final thing. So, um, the, the, the last real thing we've got to do... I'm, I'm not on T-binary. I've got carriage returns back. But I don't think it has put all the nulls back in. So I'm wondering if I should just uh, hit the reset button on this. If I do this, unplug. I unplugged the wrong thing. I unplugged the whole the whole machine, like the host, instead of unplugging the terminal. I accidentally unplugged the computer. I had this problem the other day. I looked in my backpack. <coughs> I mean, totally, I looked in my backpack looking for, uh, like, my ID or something and I found a computer that I'd forgotten um, so um, so now I'm definitely not on t-binary um, so let's try that uname dash a thing again <coughs> and see if my carriage return behaves itself And it does. So yeah, I had a weird thing, anyway. But, Palette Hands, way back when, you suggested that we try Wikipedia on Telnet. 
and the link was I've lost the link telnet.wmflabs.org let's try it WMF Labs. Which I guess stands for Wikipedia Media Foundation or something. And, uh, yeah. Okay. That didn't do anything interestingly useful. So let's try it again. Um, I'm going to try it from my uh, from my law real real terminal from my from my uh, from my black box simulation of an ASI thirty three teletype terminal. Except you can't see the keyboard; you can only see the printout. Telnet telnet dot dot labs dot org. And sure enough, nothing much happens. So, oh, oh, and I got a keyboard interrupt from, oh no, from my Telnet client, which is a Python app that has a long traceback. So I don't want to have that appear on the teletype. Um, So control and the square bracket uh, didn't that didn't do anything. So if I hit control C then it gives me these huge stack trace. But I don't think this telnet is doing anything. Um, Telnet gateway to Wikimedia content. This is what it says. Telnet.wmflabs.org No, no. Long trace back. Tracebacks are um, the bane of a teletype user's life, I think. So I'm interested in this bit here. That didn't work. So the service is down, or at least it doesn't appear to be doing anything. And uh, so that's a pity. Oh no, there we are. See Fabricator for more details. Oh, <clears throat> sick transit deleted. Boom. Oh, January this year. So that's what happens. Software goes away. Hardware sticks around. <laughs> Hardware sticks around until the mice move in and then they poop all over it and they eat all the wires and you have to clean it with rubbing alcohol.
think I'm going to stop here. Because I am very tired and I need to go home and get some food and lie down and zone. So, pal of hands, I'm disappointed at that, but it was, um, it was totally worth a try. Text-only web browsers are a thing. I've tried them a little bit and they're really frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Adventure games, now that's a good thing. Um, uh, the best thing is just write. I mean, literally the best thing is just having two people, two terminals, and write. Uh, but to do that, I've got to get this second machine up and running. And, um, and then we'll have two terminals. <laughs> so, all right. I think I'm going to close it out. Um, really awesome hanging out with you thank you so much for indulging <laughs> spending some of your precious time on this um, uh, pretty wonderful old project uh, getting crazy obsolete uh, computer terminal hardware back to do useful things and I'll see you at the next one meanwhile if you're looking for something interesting to do uh, and if you haven't seen it already, you could hop over to YouTube and watch Curious Mark on his thing, um, which is um, restoring a uh, teletype, and he's got slightly further than I have. And um, so there's that. And then the other thing that you could do if you're really looking for entertainment is hang out with other people on Twitch and uh, find some fun things. None of my, there's a few people I follow, uh, but none of my kind of super retro computing people are, uh, seem to be online right now. So I'm not going to raid. Also, I don't know how to raid. <coughs> <coughs> Someday I'll figure out how to raid. <laughs> Pallet Hands, subscribed. You wonderful person. Thank you. Thank you for the fun, and um, I'm going to turn off the stream, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>